the text messaging uh, part of Grower's Edge is very handy because uh, every day I'll receive a text that shows me uh, where the best local market is. That's what I like about Grower's Edge too. It gives me the information I want on my smartphone so that if I'm not in the office, I still get the information that I need. Hello and welcome to Grain TV. I'm Kevin McNew. To my right, Cody Bills. This morning we saw a really positive gain out of the grain markets. Soybeans led the charge 30 cents higher, corn up seven, and wheat followed with a four cent gain. Cody, what was the impetus for this morning's rally? Well, when you look at the export sales, I think that was the main key driver here. Soybeans outperforming, coming out with 2,166,000 metric tons sold. That was well above analyst expectations of between 800 to a million metric tons, 800,000 to a million metric tons. When you look at corn, we also came out on the high side of expectations, but nowhere near that sort of exaggerated beating of analyst expectations that we saw here in soybeans. Wheat was a little bit disappointing here, uh, coming in below uh, where the market expected. When you look at the charts though, look at the daily chart. This is the November daily price chart. You can see each bar representing one day worth of price activity. Today we shot above this orange line, which represents the 50-day moving average. Oftentimes when you move through that, it's very difficult to continue moving uh, through the upside. That's a big potent resistance level. I wouldn't be surprised if we see something very similar to what we saw with corn last week when we broke through that 50-day moving average, but then consolidated around that 50-day moving average uh, before this week we start moving higher here. So I think soybeans really has a little bit of uh, time where we may need to digest this move that we saw today uh, right around that 50-day moving average. Right, Cody, on those charts, you see a nice bottom piercing out there in that V formation. Do you think this is the bottom for the market or are we going to uh, continue to move higher? You know, I think the one thing about this move is it's caught a lot of people off guard. Uh, you know, this, the, the, you know, we've really turned the corner. We've started moving higher. I still think uh, that when you look at the production numbers that there's a good chance we'll end up moving lower. I, I think that this is a, a short covering rally. I think that these rallies are very difficult to know just how far they're going to go because mm -hmm. of the way that they're uh, conducted. I mean, a lot of the times uh, producers here that are have in short positions uh, will potentially be getting margin calls, and that can be a very emotional decision for them. So it's, it's hard to know whether or not this thing is going to continue moving higher here. But when you look at South America, there's, you know, there's not a huge weather concern. We're getting precipitation. Harvest is moving along here now. So I am concerned uh, that, that there's a good chance we could start tipping back over here right. in the months to come. And, and when you look historically, you rarely see V markets at the bottom. You rarely see bear markets that, uh, that end up in a V formation. You see a lot of low periods of trading low volatility that market stays down there for quite some time and so i think it's i think you're probably right i think it's unlikely we've seen the low i think we'll probably end up going back there whether you say it's going to be a week or a month it's hard to say uh, but it's certainly something that if i'm a producer i'm not betting on this market being done out of the lows yet absolutely well so there's a good chance it sounds like between your and i thoughts here is that we could end up tipping back over and retesting kind of hammering out a bottom mm -hmm. uh, but it's unlikely we just turn around and go straight you yeah. know, back up yeah the, the days of seven dollar corn and and uh you know eighteen dollar beans I think farmers have got to wipe that out of their, their mindset for right now. Absolutely. Well, we do have harvest pace picking up here with some good weather throughout the Midwest. Uh, Kevin, what, when, you're, when you're looking at these farmers that are, uh, that are harvesting and selling their grain off the combine, mm -hmm. what's the basis environment look well, like out there? Well, you know, it's not surprising that it is quite weak, and we're going to take a look at corn today. Tomorrow we're going to look at beans. But right now corn has been trading down. Uh, for pretty much the whole month of October. We, we took the last half of September and really shot lower as, as expectations were that we were going to get the crop going at an early harvest pace, but, but that didn't lead up to uh, reality because of the rains. So we've been drifting a little bit lower here. I think we might be pretty close to a bottom on basis. We are at that 30% uh, threshold. Generally, 
We see bottoms and bases somewhere between 30 to 50 percent harvest level. So we're in that range of possibility uh, where we could see that. When we look at this year compared to 2009, 2009 was a very wet, uh, wet harvest year. So we did have a late harvest. You can see at this time of year, we were only 17 percent harvested. By the time we reached 37 percent harvested, uh, we were in the first week and first and second week in November. So in my guesstimation, we're pretty close to a bottom at least on a national basis, but there are still some areas where we're going to see more basis movement to the downside. And that's not surprising in the northern tier states where they have not yet really uh, got into serious harvests. You know, in North Dakota, uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota, they're really just getting going. We haven't seen much movement in basis there, but I would expect the next week or so to really start to see those markets fall off. Iowa, they saw a big drop in basis, especially in the last week. Uh, you know, the southern tier states, I think, you know, the, the Minnesota, or sorry, the Missouris, the Kansas, those guys are pretty well, I think, out of the woods in terms of at least uh, significant drops in basis. So farmers, if I'm you right now, you know, I'm looking at my spot basis, but I'm also looking forward uh, three to six months out at my local elevators because they are really paying some pretty good premiums for carrying that grain three to six months, paying you to get it out of that harvest window and right now harvest window is is really paying or is really uh, telling you to start storing that grain because the premiums are there uh, late winter or early spring. Well that sounds fair enough of course just to summarize there it looks as though when you look at corn basis potentially right near the bottom here there are regional uh, variations though some areas coming out of harvest lows uh, quicker than others and that means that there's some opportunities out there in the cash market for those that are paying attention for those that do trade over here at Grain Hedge, we do have a great platform that helps you monitor those cash markets and find your best selling opportunity. Oftentimes in markets like this, when we've had a bear market, uh, you know, prices are going lower. Uh, the question is, what do you do? Well, the best thing you can do is to make every cash marketing sale count, and we have the tools to help you out. Thanks a lot for tuning in. If you have any questions about what we talked about today, give us a call at 877-472-4607, and we'll see you here Friday for the weekly wrap-ups.